ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق اتقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone whom we seek his help and forgiveness whoever Allah grants guidance will never be led astray and whoever he leads astray will never find guidance and I testify that none is worthy of worship in truth except Allah alone and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger O oh, you have believed Fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. O oh, you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of justice. He will then amend for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. Indeed, the most truthful speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst affairs are religious innovation. And every newly invented matter is a religious innovation. And every religious innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. As to what proceed, ayyuhal muslimun ibad Allah. In the Quran, there are many benefits and reflection that a person can do. In the Quran, there are benefits and lessons that are increases of Iman. If you reflect and ponder upon it, you will come across it. And indeed, this Quran, it is the guidance to the entire mankind. And this great book, it needs to be read and recited and understood. And from those sort that there are great benefits in it, and it is a surah that there are so many things in it and one can reflect upon and even it is a short surah the detail is immense it is a very short surah but the meaning is very comprehensive and vast dear muslims ayyuhal muslimun ibad allah so what an ask this tremendous surah the scholars have said and mentioned that this surah is a very important surah for example we have the saying of Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala He says لَوْ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ حُجَّةً عَلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ إِلَّا هَذِي الصُّورَةِ لَكَ فَتْهُمْ That he said Rahimahullah Had Allah not sent down a proof to his creation other than this surah it would have been sufficient for him Meaning that this surah Surah Al-As He would have been sufficient for us only Due to the immense benefit it has the amount of lessons and reflection in Surah Al-As there are many and it is incomprehensive for a life of a Muslim it gives their Muslims a firm direction 
it gives a firm encouragement to the believers that if they take lessons and apply them in the day-to-day -day life then that would be something major in their lives so this surah dear muslims allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says well as by time in indeed mankind is in loss Except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to the truth and advised each other to patience. The first verse, dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes an introduction to the surah and He makes an oath subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, dear Muslims, it has certain rulings and regulations for this. For us, as mankind, as creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not allowed to take an oath in any of the creation. We are only allowed to take an oath and swear by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can take an oath in any of His creation. Like as mentioned in Surah al -Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes an oath by time, wal as And this is because to show an importance in something and to show a significance in an affair. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Man halafa bi ghayrillahi faqad ashraq That whoever swears by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has committed an act of shit. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears on the, in, in His creation, in the Quran, then that doesn't mean we follow that. And doesn't mean that we, it's allowed for us to swear upon the creation. It doesn't mean that. Rather, it's upon us to follow the Quran and the Sunnah and the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we act upon his hadith where he said, that one should swear upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verse here, dear Muslims, well asked, it requires us to ponder and reflect upon this word, which means time. Time. So what is this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn by? Dear Muslims, this time, it means from the beginning of the dunya to its end. And some scholars, they have mentioned that it's the lifespan of a person and that they ponder upon their lifespan. How long are they going to live for? And Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says regarding this time mentioned here that it's a person that has been given the time to act in this dunya, to act to acquire good deeds in this dunya. So therefore, dear Muslims, in this verse we find the importance and the significance of time. And in the Sunnah there are narrations where there are five things which a person would be questioned on the day of Qiyamah. And one of them questions out of the five will be regarding a person's free time and how he utilized his free time that he was given. How did you utilize your time that you were given? Did you use your time for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or rather, did you use your time to, for his disobedience? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, it's very crucial, dear Muslims, that we consider our, we consider and we ponder our time and our life in this dunya. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna insana lafi khus. Indeed, mankind is in loss. Here, in this ayah, there's a strong affirmation. And it is a strong affirmation that the whole humankind it is in a state, they are in a state of loss, regardless of age, regardless of one lineage, regardless of one status in this dunya, regardless of one's wealth. Everyone here, everyone in earth, they are in a state of loss. And this is 100% certain that the whole humankind is in loss. So what is the loss that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he is mentioning in this world? The whole mankind is in state of loss, and the loss is the opposite of gain. But Allah he has excluded those who possess four qualities for this general rule. But dear Muslims, 
Some of the scholars, they mention that loss is of different types. You find people are in a state of loss because of their dis disbelief. They turn their backs away from the truth. They turn their backs away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the final revelation. And they are in a type of loss. Whether they are in, a sh where are, whether they are in shit, worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are still in loss. And shit, dear Muslims, it is the most despicable, most despicable sin on earth, and it invalidates a person's action. And that a person, he is in a state of loss because of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, dear Muslims, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ That if you join others in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely all your deeds will be in vain, and you will certainly be amongst the losers. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ They are indeed our losers who disbelieve the meetings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, there is another type of loss, dear Muslims, that the scholars they have mentioned regarding a person who is not acting righteously and he's not performing no good deeds, or he's, he, or he's getting himself involved in sins and whatever is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people are in loss. Dear Muslims, if we reflect upon our state as human beings, we are not perfect. Our deeds and actions are always deficient. No matter what we do and how best we try, our actions and our worship will always be deficient. How many of us, when we stand in Salah, we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we lose our concentration level in Salah. We start thinking about life. We start thinking about work and our family. We start thinking about the dunya matters and this takes away from your salah. But dear Muslims, dear brothers and sisters, but we have been given a re remedy for this on how to rectify our deficiency in our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this remedy, this remedy is doing istighfar on a regular basis, getting our tongues used to the istighfar and asking and seeking um, forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There, therefore, dear Muslims, we need to ponder upon our actions and our deeds. And this time and this life that we have, the loss that we can be in it. And if we can take an example of today's youth, the Shabab, if, we, if they do not have a firm tarbiyah, if they do not get the correct direction from the parents, then they will be most likely falling into things that will cause them a loss in both dunya. So therefore, the attention needs to be given to the youth. So dear Muslims, dear parents, give attention to your child, children and students so that they may be guided and help and aid them so that they do not fall into that which cause them to be in loss. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He took an oath at the beginning of the surah to show the importance of time. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addressed the entire humankind that they are in the state of loss. Thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran or in the surah, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So the first, for, so this verse, Allah he gives an exception to those who are in, not in loss. And these people who are not in loss are those who have four qualities. And it's mentioned in this surah. Number one of these qualities is true iman. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Having true iman. And second one is the one who does righteous action. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And the third one being enjoining one another with the truth. And the fourth being, the last and final one, enjoying one another with patience and perseverance. Now, Iman, dear Muslims, this is the first quality that is mentioned in this surah. 
Iman is not achieved and it's not attained by just having hope. Iman it comes after knowledge. So to learn it and learning is something crucial and important should be given because Iman it's not based upon falsehood and desires. Rather, Iman, true Iman, it is having knowledge. And this knowledge, it needs to be in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. So it's not sufficient just to say that I believe in Allah and to be a good person and then thinking you'll be going into paradise automatically. No, so this is an incorrect understanding. Rather, this is a way of corruption. Dear Muslims, true Iman, it is to believe in Allah, all of His names and attributes. It is to worship Him alone and it is called to the example of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Iman, it increases and decreases. It increases with righteous actions and it decreases with disobedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's why sometimes we hear that people say, I feel weak in Iman. My Iman, he feels weak, and when they investigate into their actions and they do not, they don't do any righteous actions, and they involve in them, themselves in haram, like riba and zina and shirk. These are the main problems and causes for a person to have a weak Iman. These are some of the reasons why a person may feel weak in Iman, or they feel low in Iman, because of indulging into sins. And Iman, dear Muslims, brothers and sisters, it has six pillars as it came in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam where it says, أَن تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَتُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدْرِ فَيْدِهِ وَشَرِّهِ That is that you believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers and in the last day and is to believe in, in the qadr, in the fate, both in its good and in its evil aspects. So this is a very important quality and attribute which removes a person out of the state of loss. That person, he must have knowledge of his creator and it's, this knowledge is to take, be taken from the Quran and the Sunnah. The second quality, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa amilu salihat, that they act righteously. This guideline, the guideline for righteous deeds to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that every act that is sincerely for the sake of Allah and in the accordance to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So once a person he has time, which many of us have, many of us have time, then it is upon us to gain knowledge. And this knowledge is the knowledge of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is the knowledge to have in regards to the basics of the deen. After gaining knowledge, my dear br brothers and sisters, it's upon us to act upon this knowledge. And not, this knowledge needs to be inclined, as we mentioned, with the Quran and the Sunnah. It, it needs to be according to the Sunnah of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to worship Him. Like how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam worshipped Him. And knowledge is joined to action. And action is the fruit of knowledge. So knowledge without action is like a tree without fruits. That there is no benefit in it. And knowledge was sent down to us to bring about action. So it may benefit us. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters we request you to come forward as brothers there is brothers waiting at the back please come forward inshallah ta'ala wa rahmatullah fi My dear brothers and sisters we were talking about Surah Al-Asr and we discussed each ayah 
and its significance and its merits. And we got to the stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, and advise each other to the truth. And Al Haq mentioned here, the scholars they say that this truth is the whole religion. This truth is the whole religion and it is the Sharia ah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars have said that the truth is also encouraging the good and forbidding the evil. And the truth is also that people should encourage people to do and to encourage them to have the true Iman and to do righteous action until they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, He mentions and advise each other to patience. Another important attribute for the Muslim teach that you should implement. And indeed, patience, dear Muslims, it should be an actual action of the Muslim generally. And the scholars, they have mentioned that patience is of three types. The patient is of three types. The first being <coughs> patience for the obedience of Allah's command. Like being patient upon your salawat, being patient upon your siyam, being patient in your ibadah. Even if you're feeling weak in your iman, you know it is the truth. So you should follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type of category of a sabr, patient, it is to be patient in not to dis disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to stay far away from the Maya and major sins. Patience needs to be applied in this as well, to control yourself and to have your focus on Allah and pleasing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third and final category of a sabr, or the type of sabr, it is the patience upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qadr. Being patient of, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what He decreed. And indeed sometimes in our lives we will be going through difficulties, we will be going through trials and tribulation that will affect us. So it's upon us to be patient during these calamities and to know that Allah He wants good for us and He will be eventually take us out of this difficulty situation. So call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says in the Quran and whoever has taqwa of Allah, he will make a way from him to get out. So dear Muslims, those who possess these four characteristics that we mentioned, which are gaining knowledge, which is found in the Quran and the Sunnah, acting upon this knowledge, because there is no benefit, of it, as we mentioned, in having knowledge but not acting upon knowledge. But you must have knowledge and put it into practice. Thereafter, having, after having knowledge, one, he must, he call towards this knowledge, call towards sound knowledge, and these people who do this are safe from the state of loss. Ibad Allah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك زيادة في الإيمان اللهم إنا نسألك زيادة في الإيمان وبركة في العمر وصحة في الجسد وتوبة قبل الموت ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم آمين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله